Today is quote of the day. You have everything you need right now by Kay Eugen. Hey guys, trying to get better about being in front of the camera. I always think I look like a wreck half the time, so just bear with me. I'm kind of an ugly old goober. So the next thing is, and I had mentioned it before, is I want to build some sort of reinforcement since I'm going to the coilovers for the IRS and um, get something welded in, box in, whatever, run a tube across and possibly run a tube from the roll cage down to uh, like a crossbar between the shock towers there to get that reinforced. So next step is getting all the headliner out of this guy and getting these sail panels out of here. So basically getting the gut interior gutted even more. Okay, for those of you that might be going through the same, you have to take everything off the headliner, take the um, pieces, the trim pieces that run just above the door and they just kind of snap into place with a pressure fit like clip. Well, I watched uh, CJ Pony Parts and they said just take this front trim and kind of twist it and pull it towards the windshield. Well, I had a heck of a time. So you can see there's these little slots in the ceiling here. So these are the clips that fit up in that trim piece. So these kind of sit in that trim piece and then this pops up into this slot in the ceiling and it said just kind of pop it and pop it away. Well, I went to pop a couple of them away and I think this tab just started bending and catching on the ceiling. So I had a heck of a time trying to get this out of here. So I ended up prying one down far enough so that I could, so it was kind of hanging in there like that and I got rid of the A-pillar trim and ended up sliding the trim piece off far enough to get it popped off of the one on that side. And then I just pulled it and popped it and just slid it out of the car. And then ended up prying around on these until I finally got them. I ended up popping all of them out of the ceiling there. Or two, two out of the three were like that. And then the one, I went to pop the one off on the driver's side. So it's popped into that slot in the ceiling up there. And it just <clears throat> popped right out. But these other two were a, a pain in the arse. So... Just a little word of warning to some of you that might be going through some of the same stuff. Be ready for a struggle. And uh, hopefully you don't have the same thing I do, but no, I'm gonna have to order some new clips. Luckily it didn't ruin the trim too bad. I I'm glad I recorded that so I can remember how that kind of pops in. So I kind of got to pop it in from the bottom up and around the roll cage, kind of shove it ahead and then peel this backside in. So luckily these older plastics aren't uh, brittle. Otherwise that would have been a major fiasco. Went a lot smoother that time after having the practice on the driver's side first. But yeah, got uh, got this all pulled out. I think I will work on getting this sound deadener and stuff out of here and start working on my um, supports for that. So the next adventure. Working on getting all this old sound deadener out of here. So I had some sitting here. I noticed that I must have had mice in here at one point in time because some of this insulation is pretty 
chewed up. So I think that stuff is probably gonna end up in the garbage. Ended up pulling my seat belts out of here. So I think I kind of got some room up there to get above and hopefully get that welded in. Oh, that's what I gotta do yet. I gotta pull that headliner out. I got everything else out but the headliner. So I'll work on getting that out of here too and getting this sound deadener. Then I'll probably come back and show you how bare everything looks. So I'll talk to you guys in a few minutes. All right, I got the headliner pulled out of this guy now. As soon as I pulled it back, that side fell. I'll go around to the other side in a second. But yeah, it looks pretty grody. So that's gonna come down. Gonna slop some uh, kill mat stuff up there, some other sound deadener to to get it good when it uh, goes back together. So if I haven't said it already, this was a pain to get all apart. So I'm hoping once I get all my uh, work done in here, I don't ever have to pull this interior apart again. But I've learned to never say never. So I just thought I'd show this and that mess on the floor. But I'll get this out of here, get it cleaned up, and get to working on that uh, last little bit of the project here of getting that little cross member built in between the shock towers. So I think this is the first I've shown since I drug all the that other sound deadener out of here. I got the shock bolts undone, so the suspension's just hanging there. I was debating on what to do to reinforce this the shock mounts there since I'm going to be running coilovers now. Like I said, I'd seen someone else after running coilovers on an IRS where this pocket was starting to split out of the floor. Well, you can see here, this pocket right here. So here you got your inner fender liner, your trunk floor, and then this is another little pocket that's all stamped and it's spot welded to the inside of the inner fender well here and to this little bump up in the floor. So I dug out all the um, seam sealer and you can see that it's just a stamped piece of steel all the way around the bottom and then it's the trunk floor welded to the inner fender liner, fender well here and then again this pocket is up here. And then it's got this extra like reinforcement on here but it's just basically spot welded to the top of this shock pocket. I'll call it. So what I'm thinking I'll do is run a bead all the way around the whole top and all the way around where it's welded to the sheet metal here. And then also weld it from this extra little reinforcement to the shock tower here. Um, then I started thinking about, well, how about running building a bracket that goes on each side here with a tube in between and then also maybe running a tube from the roll bar down to either the shock pocket shock tower here or down to a bar that would connect the bracket side to side but then just thinking about how much work that might be to wrestle in all the plastics it, I think it would just make it impossible to even get it in here since I kind of had to fold it under the the roll bar here. So now what I'm thinking is I want to keep those um, sail panels as solid as possible. So what I'm thinking I'll do now is build just some gussets just ahead of here. And then maybe just some small gussets here to connect the pockets together. And this seems kind of thick. Yeah, I guess it's still kind of sheet metal, but I think I'm just going to use some other um, like eighth inch steel or something and just basically make some gussets that go from here and then up to here and just try to kind of get that like boxed in maybe but uh that's my thought for now may I even run some gussets on here front and back so i got a bunch of more uh cutting and grinding to do <laughs> in my future 
So I figure whatever I do, I'll try to take my time, think about it here. What I do on this side, I'm gonna mimic what's done on, mimic it to the other side. But I basically wanna leave room because you got this rubber bushing and washer and nut that go on top of here. So whatever I do, I'm gonna build it so that it still has clearance for mount, mounting that there. Cause I don't wanna make it any thicker cause that top threaded portion of the shock rod isn't uh, extremely tall or anything like that. So I'm gonna try to go with something here. Also looking under here, I know um, my spring was really close to these. You can see right along through here where there's some spot welds here. So I'm gonna try to trim back and leave the spot welds intact and up a little bit so that I have room for the for the coilover spring there. This is the bottom side of that pocket so you can see it's all spot welded in here too. So I might run a weld down here basically all the way around this sheet middle up under here and along here and uh, get that all reinforced as the best I can. It's going to be interesting. I'll leave it at that. But yeah, you can see it's just all spot welds here. Me, if I get all this welded in and reinforced, that'll be all it needs. Hey guys, I thought I'd do a real quick video here before I get started for the day, just to show how I'm trying to reinforce those shock towers, or shock pockets, towers, whatever you want to call them in the rear. So that's the finished side. So here's the before side. So as you can see, there's a whole lot of uh, seam sealer gooped in there, like all the way around. So I'll be out here for a little bit chipping that away and getting some of this sound deadener and uh, seam sealer away from that pocket there. And then just a before shot of this, there's quite a bit of undercoating under here. So I might have to take a few breathers today. I kind of figured out after yesterday. <coughs> I think I inhaled a little too many fumes that probably weren't good for me but again weld all the way around this side and then up that side and then same thing for this side and you can kind of see there's not much in there right now and then i do did along the bottom there yesterday too so i'll probably <coughs> get all my work done and kind of show you the show you the after when it's all done i don't think you need to sit here and Watch me huff fumes. So I'm just getting ready to weld here. So I thought I'd show you the stages before, during, and after on this side. I'm not sure how good I recorded on the other side. Yeah, I was wire wheeling, grinding, and chipping stuff out. So I got the safety glasses on yet. Um, but yeah, I'll show what I've got right here. So I cleaned all up. I tried to clean up as much undercoating around here as I could, getting in here with the wire wheel and on a drill and everything. Um, just a small wire wheel and then a wire wheel on a grinder. And took off a bunch of this undercoating that was smoldering. I think I'm still feeling some effects from that yesterday. You don't feel the greatest, but therefore, I drug another fan out of the basement. Hopefully you can hear me over the fan. We'll see how it sounds when it's done. But yeah, so that's the underside. Hopefully I can do it without uh, getting too uh, smoky in here. And then on the top here, same thing. Got all that uh, uh, seam sealer kind of knocked out of the way. There's a little kind of in the crevices, but I figure I can either, uh, maybe I'll grab a little torch and try to burn that out a little bit. But I got uh, well, most of the red paint off, tried to get through some of the e-code or primer, whatever it is underneath. But uh, I think I got that pretty good to go here. As you can see, I got everything kind of out of the way. So pretty much everything you see as far as seams, I'm going to try to weld back here because I noticed when I was pushing here, it actually pushed the fender away, fender, inner fender away a little bit. So... Once I get that welded, that should be a little more solid. So what I'm doing is anything where you see a seam here, 
is gonna get is gonna get a weld put on it. Then I weld this bracket all the way around too. Then I try to fill in between the inner fender and the shock tower here and this brace that's on here and just try to fill that in as good as possible. So we'll see how I do. Hopefully it looks better than that side. That side looks really goobered up, but there's a weld on it. So some of it looked really good, some of it not so good. And uh, got the welder all set up here, ready to go. Just throw the helmet on and gloves and get busy. Just thought I'd show. So this is the after. This side, it is a little goobered up, but it looks a lot better than the, than the other side. I think I got a little, in a little bit of a rush here yesterday and just didn't take my time and make sure I had my welds going down right and everything. But this side does look quite a bit better. Like I said, it started out here, there was a gap. So I kind of got that all filled in and got that. Uh, so basically every seam all the way around here is all welded up now. Up and around the top, I even went along the, but uh, got that inner fender kind of welded to the, the hatch, the deck floor here a little bit. It was kind of pushing away a little bit when I was trying to get that seam sealer out. It seemed like it was bowing a little bit. So I got that all welded in. Like I said, I got to touch up that spot yet it looks like and get that seam welded in. But it looks pretty good the rest of the way around. Like I said, under here, I tried to get as much of the undercoating away before I started welding. But you could tell it was still getting kind of close and smoking a little bit up here. But you can see pretty much everything inside there had a couple spots where, like one or two spots where I burned through. So hopefully that doesn't cause me issues down the road here. Um, this looks pretty goobered up, but it is what it is and weld it all the way around the inside and all the way around that bracket there so i'm pretty happy with how it's turning out all right so hopefully this will be the last video of the stuff i'm doing to kind of uh finish up these rear shock towers so as you know i uh welded all this in and then i thought about using some sheet metal and just making a piece that would kind of go up and around here and build a couple of gussets. But I have some eighth inch metal that I was thinking of using here. So I pounded around on that for probably a good hour trying to get it to fit this shape here. Because you can kind of see it bulges out a little bit here. It's flat here and bulges in right here. And I just could not get it to fit right. So I went to another plan of attack and I was just doing some looking and I thought, well, so some of this under here in the shock tower looks pretty flat, like here on the rear side and then the front side too is kind of flat there. So I thought, well, what if I uh, weld in some sheet metal and go up and you can kind of see where that inside brace comes down. There's some weld along there and uh, just have kind of an L-shaped piece, if you will, to fill in these sides. So that's what I started with, with that idea. Show you my messy workbench here. But I started out and just made some templates for the left side, the passenger side. So that uh, goes towards the front of the shock tower, towards the front of the car. This one towards the rear of the car. And I uh, made some templates there. And uh, I'll just show, since I don't have it welded in on this side yet, so I basically ended up with some sheet metal pieces, or eighth inch metal. So I cut it to shape, drilled a couple holes for plug welds, and thought, well, I'll just weld that in, and hopefully that'll give it extra little bit of comfort that I thought I'd need um, to feel good about these things. Um, handling these nice good old coilovers so you can see here maybe you can tell that i got it all welded in on this side so i got the plug weld so i got a plate here on the rear side and in the front side um you can see some goobered up weld so i did it around all the sides so the front uh, along the shock tower and up to the top and around the side and filled in the plug welds 
did that front and rear. This piece wasn't quite long enough and I had to weld an extra little tab, tab up on the top there. And you can see some of my nice goober up welds in there, but uh, mostly it came out pretty well. And I got plenty of room for the top of that coil over and I did trim out all around here. Probably took about a half inch out all the way around for that coil over. So that's kind of what the finished product looks like. So I thought I'd just kind of go through that process from the template to cutting out the pieces to having it welded in. So I think I'll probably come back out here in the next day or so. My uh, argon tank is getting a little bit low on the welder. But uh, hopefully I'll have enough to get that last couple pieces welded in. I thought this was a pretty good stopping point for showing where I'm at with the cage and with these uh, shock towers.